we're just finishing up day eight. For this week, the focus is going to be kind of different. So last week, you know, we did all the fun stuff. Like we did just ascension after ascension. We got like 90% of all the upgrades and achievements. Now, like we're probably going to be entering the boring part of the speed run, which is long term sugar lump production. So yeah, at some point we're going to have to do, you know, gaseous assets and um, get a bunch of golden cookie clicks. Right now, I want to do some theory crafting for sugar lumps because since we started this, I've, you know, had Cookie Clicker open for 130 hours. Now, granted, a lot of that has been running with me away from the computer or um, with me like doing something else and just, you know, every couple minutes glancing over to click a golden cookie or, you know, not really actively playing. But still, um, like I was so tired and burnt out after all the ascensions yesterday. So the strategic challenge at this point is to figure out a way to average more than three sugar lumps a day for you know a year um but putting in minimal time so that we're not burning ourselves out by the way there's like totally a media sugar lump here so i didn't uh like multi reload for that at all like that was just i had the ground apocalypse going and um harvested a sugar lump with the dragon's curve on we have three strategies for getting sugar lumps more quickly than just, you know, the about one per day. Um, with all the upgrades, it's like one and a third a day or something like that. The first is um, this horrible spreadsheet where we just multi-save. So we harvest a, the same sugar lump um, at hundreds of different times to get independent chances that it'll be a special kind of sugar lump. The second method of getting sugar lumps is obviously to sacrifice the garden. That's what got us up to our quota for the first week of the run. Third way, which we also used, is um, scum accelerating plant growth. So right when the garden ticks, you can save beforehand, you know, export a save, and reload the garden over and over again. And as you do that, um, you can actually get a juicy queen bee to grow 12 times faster than it normally would. So we'll start with the sugar lumps, because I think those are going to be our best bet for doing this effortlessly. They mature after about 18 hours, ripen at 20, and fall after 21. So that math is going to be important. And one other fact that we're going to be able to use here is that the time for sugar lump growth depends on our grandmas. So if I just sell off all our grandmas right now, these times all go up by one hour just about. So one of our heavenly upgrades lets our grandmas determine to some degree the growth rate of our sugar lumps, and that's actually going to turn out to be super important for our strategy. I want to use some math to try to find ourselves a good schedule for harvesting sugar lumps for the year. So all I've drawn here is just the times for uh, sugar lump growth, so mature, ripe, and falls. 18 hours, 20 hours, 21 hours with all our grandmas, and then with no grandmas, just an hour more. And then uh, just to make things easier for the math we're about to do, um, we're going to use essentially modular arithmetic, but that just means um, remembering that clocks work on 24 hours. So like 21 hours in the future is three hours earlier the next day. That just makes it a little easier for us to do the math in our heads. And then I'm going to put down three rules um, to make this this whole speed run easier on me. So I'm going to have sleep hours, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. That's about usually when I go to bed and wake up. And also, um, I'm only going to multi-save ripe sugar lumps. So multi-saving, you know, where we open up our big spreadsheet and save a bunch of <laughs> sugar lumps starting their growth at different times. You remember when we did it for a mature sugar lump, we had the problem that we had to reload often because of botched harvests. And so by restricting ourselves like this, we'll actually be able to create twice as many save files in the same amount of time. So again, this is just to minimize the active gameplay time that we spend getting these sugar lumps. And then same thing here, I'm, I'm not going to let myself multi-load and multi-save back to back. So after we've you know created all our save files, we multi-load where we open up the spreadsheet and reload looking for a golden or a caramelized sugar lump. Once we found it, I could multi-save again. And well, even if we waited until our multi-loaded sugar lump was ripe, we still have the problem that it's a caramelized or golden sugar lump. 
which give you a random amount of normal sugar lumps in return. Uh, 1 to 3 for caramelized, 2 to 7 for golden. And so, same problem as trying to multi-save a mature sugar lump, we'll have to reload over and over again until we get that optimal amount of sugar lumps. Um, four or five times on average, actually. Okay, so with that information in mind, I want to try to sh show you, well, first, three possible uh, sugar lump harvest strategies that I don't think are that good. And then after we've kind of looked at these and gotten a sense for how setting these up works, then we'll set up what I think will be our final one for the whole run. So the most basic one you could do is just never opening the game. And so what I've done here is each time a sugar lump is harvested, I've uh, color coded what state it's in when it's harvested. So if it's falling, it'll be in this yellowish green color. If it's ripe when it's harvested, it'll be red. And if it's mature when it's harvested, it'll be blue. So most basic route is just, you know, you let all of them fall. You don't do anything. And if you do that, um, in one week, there's actually exactly eight sugar lump cycles, and you get about 1.14 per day. The next method, I, I just call the check-in method. So all you do is, when a sugar lump hits maturity, you just check in, you open the game, you reload harvest it to avoid botched harvests, and then close the game. And that gets you 1.45 uh, sugar lumps per day, but has the problem that at least one of those four harvests, so once every three days, you're going to have to wake up during your normal sleep cycle uh, to harvest sugar lumps, unless you sleep in like two or four hour chunks or something like that, which I think some people actually do. Um, I don't though. I just sleep in one big chunk, so no, no 4 a.m. And the last one is uh, what I'm calling the greedy method, which is you use multi-save and multi-loading, but you do everything as soon as possible. So so I set all these up to start at 10 p.m. just so they're kind of comparable. So say at 10 p.m. we have a ripe sugar lump, we multi-save it, and then as soon as it reaches maturity the next day at 4 p.m. we multi-load it and then you know pick the best sugar lump. And then we can't multi-load and multi-save, you know, at the same session. So the next session, we multi-save, which will be about noon and 6 a.m. So you can see already we're perfectly sandwiching uh, the sleep hours, which I kind of don't like already. You know, I prefer to have prob at least, you know, like if possible, a nine or 10 hour window around my sleep cycle so I can kind of like turn off electronics for an hour before bedtime. But, you know, okay, whatever. We multi-loaded at 6 a.m., wake up bright and early. The next one, we can't really do anything because no matter what method we choose, it's going to happen in our sleep hour. So, okay, so at 3 a.m., we just let it auto fall. And now we have a choice to make. Either at 11 p.m. when it ripens, we could multi-save again, but now we're, you know, in our sleep hours, or we could let, you know, it fall again the next night at midnight, or same day, however that works. And then at 8 p.m., we multi-save again. And so this route has a few problems. One is you can see it's, it's kind of like, it's technically not in, you know, like the sleep hours for this route, but you know, it's, it's not being very respectful of the sleep hours. It's, it's poking up close to them. Additionally, it doesn't line up. So, you know, if you take this route so that it's not in your sleep hours, there's like a two hour difference. And plus this thing, what is this? Yeah. So two problems with this is one, the hour doesn't line up. So you can see it's like, you're going to like, there's no kind of regular schedule you can settle into. But secondly, the day doesn't line up either. This is a six day cycle. Your evening multi-save, you know, it's going to happen on Monday, but then the next week it'll be on Sunday and then the week after that on Saturday. And so there's, you know, there's no kind of week wide schedule you can settle into. And, you know, for just like a month of doing this, that's probably not a problem. But since I'm going to be trying to keep this up for a year, I want to like try to use my brain cells and figure out a schedule that's like the same you know, each week. I can just set some alarms, I can settle into it, it can become a habit and effortless for the rest of the year. Okay, so here's the route that I'm actually like super excited about, as plainly indicated by the decor. This is why I mentioned the grandmas. And at first you might think it's like, oh, well, why would you ever sell your grandmas and make your sugar lumps grow slower? Like, 
And, well, the answer is that you can create a very well-scheduled sugar lump harvesting route by selling your grandmas in strategic locations. That is the weirdest sentence <laughs> I have ever said while explaining a video game. So we start out with a sugar lump ripening, you know, at 10 p.m. like we did before. But with all our grandmas sold, the reason for that is now, the next day, our next uh loading session will be only three hours earlier and you know you could load when it's mature but i'm doing the loading sessions and the saving sessions while it's ripe and that way you can fit a lot more of them into i guess you could say one day cycle yeah this is occurring over you know like six days there but it doesn't wrap around and hit your sleep cycle as quickly as the greedy strategy did so you can see here, because we were going so fast, you can see the times were moving earlier and earlier through the day. So we could only fit in two uh, save and load sessions um, before we hit our sleep cycle. Whereas here, we can fit in three save and load sessions before we hit our sleep cycle. This time only progresses by three hours earlier and earlier into the day instead of four or six hours. And that's another nice feature is this thing, uh, the sleep window for this schedule is nine hours instead of eight. And then at 5 a.m., uh, you'll have a sugar lump auto harvest. And then what you'll do is sometime on Friday, about noon probably, you'll buy a bunch of grandmas. So with no grandmas, the time it takes for sugar lump to fall is 22 hours or you know two hours earlier the next day. But once we have the grandmas again, it'll be three hours. So back over here, it will be about 2 a.m. that the next sugar lump falls, and then four hours earlier, because we still have the grandmas, we'll be back at 10 p.m. right where we started, ready to multi-save and repeat the whole thing the next week. And so I've even marked out which days work best with my schedule for everything to happen. Because <laughs> honestly, most Saturdays I'm home by 10 p.m., but um, my wife works schedule, has she has Wednesday off, and our routine is to like, you know, go out and do arts and crafts and get lunch together on Wednesdays, and so, you know, this way I'll be done with the cookie clicker stuff by like, you know, 10.30, and then she and I can go out to lunch, and also this way, you can see Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, all of the, uh, all of the work is being done 7 p.m. or earlier. That way, I don't have to keep her up with the computer and the lights on, uh, on the days before she has to go to work. So you can see, like, a lot of the strategy with, you know, this speedrun isn't actually just optimizing the game, but is figuring out how to play the game well, while just maintaining healthy habits in all the other parts of your life. And, like, it, it keeps getting cooler, so I'm not even done with this yet. When we multi-save and multi-load, it's probably not going to be exactly four hours between uh, ripening here, because we're probably going to end up picking a save about halfway through our save session. So let's just say we save for 20, 30 minutes. That means this next uh, session isn't going to be at 7 p.m. It's going to be more like 7.10 or 7.15. And that'll continue through all three sessions. So that by the time we get here and here, this is probably going to be more like 8 a.m. or uh, 6 a.m. And this is the cool part, man. It's like because we're using the grandmas here, we can actually adjust this as it drifts earlier or later. So let's just say this is 8 a.m. Then all we do instead is buy our grandmas sometime on Thursday instead. And now we'll have 8 a.m. Three hours later, the next one will fall at 5 a.m. And we're back on track. Okay, so that's the master plan for our sugar lump harvesting schedule. Obviously, the question remains, how many sugar lumps are we actually going to get from that? And, well, the answer is it depends on just how many save files we create when we sit down to multi-save and multi-load. Now, what I found is that I can do uh, 250 saves with a mature sugar lump. So it probably means I can do three to 400 with a ripe sugar lump uh, per hour. Next, I... Did a bunch of math to figure out exactly how many sugar lumps we're gonna get. Um, I'm actually recording this like a week later while I was editing the video, just cause I'm not happy with the explanation I did of the math a week ago when uh, I started this sugar lump schedule. There's three kinds of sugar lumps we're gonna be getting that are gonna give us extra, which is golden, 
caramelized and bifurcated, giving us, uh, um, with save scumming, seven, three, and two extra sugar lumps. Don't look spoilers. And then you can just plug, you know, these probabilities here into uh, the right equations. And, well, these three lines down here are just showing the probability of getting at least one of each kind of rare sugar lump, depending on how many multi-saves we do. So the bottom one is the golden sugar lump. Um, so you can see if we do 400 multi-saves, out of 44% probability, we'll get at least one. And then, you know, if we do 400 multi-saves, it's pretty much 100% for both bifurcated and caramelized. Um, but doing 400 is infeasible, and what I've actually learned is doing 100 kind of wears me out too. So more like like 20 to 50 is the range I can think I can act I think I can actually keep up for an entire year. What I did next was um, I combined those equations into the expected number of sugar lumps per multi-save that we would get depending on how many save files we create. And that's what this purple line here is. So what this tells you is say you sit down, you do 150 multi-saves, on average you would get 3.661. Uh, sugar lumps, you know, added to your sugar lump counter at the end of that save. Lastly, what you can do if, you know, your weekly schedule has three multi-saves and, you know, five non-multi-saved sugar lumps, then, well, here's the equation for the expected daily uh, sugar lumps you would get um, for the whole year or the week or however long you keep up that schedule, and that's what this blue line here is showing. And, uh, these dots are just showing you the expected number of sugar lumps for 5, 15, 30, and 60 minutes of um, save scumming. You can see even at 100, we're still only averaging about two sugar lumps per day, which is one less than what we need. I think it'll be a lot better to try to farm uh, juicy queen beets for those last few sugar lumps than to try to complete the garden. Uh, the reason being, <laughs> completing the garden's hard. Farming Juicy Queen Beats lends itself pretty nicely to the other parts of the speedrun. We're gonna have to get, you know, 999 spells cast, we're gonna have to get a lot of golden cookie clicks, and we're gonna have to get gaseous assets from the stock market. All of those achievements can be done um, with kind of semi-active gameplay, where, you know, I have the screen open, but, you know, I'm doing other stuff and just kind of turning to check in every minute or two. Not, you know, I don't have to give my full attention to the game. Farming Juicy Queen Beats fits in pretty well with that. So what I can do is once we get the full garden, I can save scum in four Juicy Queen Beats, uh, put in some tidy grass or something to stop weeds and don't have to worry about it for like two days. And then two days later, we get four more uh, sugar lumps. Now, when we do our, you know, fancy schedule here, we are going to have to keep the game closed for about 60 hours of the week. And that's just because when we multi-save, uh, there isn't really any point in playing the game because it's unlikely that the, uh, the save that we play will be the one we end up choosing our sugar lump from when we load up the exports. As a result, um, the game is going to be open uh, potentially for, um, about, like, four and a third day. And, well, Juicy Queen Beats take a little over two days to grow, with, you know, save scumming nudging them a little bit faster. You could probably bring that down, and, uh, we could comfortably fit two Juicy Queen Beat cycles into our, like, week-long, uh, cookie clicker schedule. So if I reopen our graphing calculator, um, this means that as long as we're kind of passively farming juicy queen beets in the garden and getting an extra eight uh, sugar lumps per week, the new graph of our daily sugar lump average looks something like this. And this is a lot more comfortable because this means at just uh, 50 exports per um, save session for coalescing sugar lumps, we're already averaging over three lumps per day. For this week, what I want to try to do now is just try out this schedule to see if, you know, if the theory works out in practice and just how it feels because we're going to be, you know, doing this another 50 times over the next year. But I kid you not, I thought the first challenge was going to be lining up our sugar lumps currently with, you know, the schedule because 
you know, worst case scenario, it could be off by 12 hours and it takes me the rest of the week just to line up the sugar lump growth with our uh, schedule here. The schedule here I made without checking at all where our sugar lumps were in the game has the Tuesday sugar lump harvested at 1 p.m. So just totally by luck, our sugar lumps are already within an hour of what they need to be to uh, get on board with this, this schedule. Here. We've done all the theory, so now all that's left is to actually do it. So I guess for the next six days, I'll be playing the mini games, clicking golden cookies, and uh, sticking to the schedule. I always forget to change the day counter. Okay, here we go. Okay, so there's two. And then sell. Does that still count? Hey, yeah, it does. Yo, I just realized I totally forgot about Rigidel for all the math I did. So essentially with Rigidel and all the other, you know, sugar lump upgrades active, um, these are the new times for maturation, ripening, and falling. And what you can do is you can actually still make a, uh, a schedule that's a perfect week. So it has seven days and uh, comes back to the same time that it started at. But what's weird is um, here, because you can go so quickly with your lumps, you can actually uh, hit your sleep cycle twice in this weekly schedule instead of once. What ends up happening is that you can fit in an extra sugar lump cycle so that you have nine sugar lump cycles in the week instead of eight, but at the cost of only being able to multi-save for two of them instead of three. Here's the graphs from before. Uh, the purple one is the daily average sugar lumps um, plotted over, you know, how many uh, file saves we create uh, using our original um, schedule. This blue line is the same data, but for the um, nine sugar lump cycle rigid L schedule. So you can almost call this like the eight cycle weekly schedule, and this is the nine cycle weekly schedule. So because the eight cycle can fit in like three instances of multi saving, it actually turns out to be better, like pretty much if you do any decent amount of multi saves. Uh, however, you know, if you're doing less than 10 multi saves, the, um, the nine cycle with rigid L is better. I was originally going to put um, days like 8 through 15 in one video. I didn't realize that all my explaining already took up like 20 minutes of time. So that's it for the episode. Thanks for watching.